I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share with you the radical approach we have taken at the Gillies McIndoe Research Institute at Wellington, New Zealand in addressing the burgeoning cancer problem through drug repurposing, using old weapons for new battles. And through that, I hope to convey a message of hope. These are a series of photographs of a child affected by strawberry birthmark that grows from a flat blemish to a large tumor. This is typically treated with high-dose steroid, which is associated with high complication rates. And the child is usually left with a residuum that requires surgery and or laser treatment. Our investigation into this tumor has led us to discover the stem cell origin of this tumor and evidence that these stem cells arise from the placenta. We went on to discover the role of the renin angiotensin system, which is known to be important in regulation of blood pressure. This discovery underscore the way that we treat strawberry birthmark today using medications that are usually used to treat high blood pressure. These groups of medications, they are commonly used, they are off patent and low cost, and they are safe, block different steps of the renin angiotensin system. This is a, a child who has a strawberry birthmark affecting the cheek and the eye socket, pushing the eye upwards and forward. Left untreated, the eye would go blind. This is her a week, a month, and five months after propranolol treatment the first beta blocker that was developed to treat high blood pressure over 50 years ago. This medication was given by mouth, at home, near the family, away from the hospital. The renin angiotensin system has a number of key steps that can be blocked by groups of medications. For example, ACE inhibitors, which blocks the ACE enzyme. We proposed that we could use Keptopril, one of the ACE inhibitors, to treat strawberry birthmarks. We conducted the world's first ever clinical trial at Heart Hospital in Wellington, New Zealand, to treat strawberry birthmark. This is one of the children treated this way. And that's her at five months of age before treatment, and four months after treatment, and before she went to school. For over a hundred years, we have been pursuing novel drugs, which takes upwards of a billion dollars to develop, over 12 years to get to the market, and is extremely unlikely to be successful. Drug repurposing, however, costs a fraction of that amount, and is a lot more likely to be successful. I have just given you two examples of drug repurposing. Each of these drugs costs five dollars, a prescription. After we published our work on the results of this study, we were invited to contribute a chapter to this two-volume book, ACE Inhibitors. We received a copy of the book when it was published, and when I opened the book, the editor of uh, the book had this to say. Ten and colleagues in Wellington, New Zealand, report a novel and fascinating paradigm shift in the utilization of ACE in the treatment of hemangioma. He went on to say, drug manufacturers and cancer research must take note of this new major paradigm shift. Cancer is the leading cause of death worldwide with huge human and economic costs. It affects one out of three people in their lifetime and is the biggest cause of death responsible for nearly a third of all deaths. Globally, in 2018, there were 18 million new cases and over 10 million deaths. In New Zealand, there are 25,000 new cases a year and over 11,000 
non-melanoma skin case, uh, cancers in addition. This incidence is projected to increase by 50% by 2035, a really frightening prospect. This is mainly caused by the aging population. The treatment for cancer is harsh. It is also partially effective. And in New Zealand, we spend a billion dollars uh, a year to treat cancer. But this cost is escalating because of the aging population and the escalating cost of novel cancer drugs. And this leads to the disparity of access. An effective, low cost, and gentler cancer treatment is urgently needed. We apply our knowledge in strawberry birthmark in the investigation of cancer based on the cancer stem cell concept of cancer. This is also known the hierarchical model of cancer. Imagine cancer is like a beehive. If you look at a beehive, you see worker bees. Those are the cancer cells. But the reason why a beehive exists is the queen bee. Because if you look, look deeper in the beehive, there is a queen bee. The queen bee is like the cancer stem cells. Cancer stem cells are highly tumorigenic. That is, they make tumors. They divide asymmetrically, giving rise to cancer cells, which form the bulk of the tumor, but they are not tumorigenic. Cancer stem cells also give rise to cancer stem cells which have the pluripotency and cell renewal properties. That is, they can make different cell types and they can make themselves. They are responsible for cancer metastasis and recurrence and drug resistance. So based on this concept, we looked at a number of cancer types. The, one of the first cancers we looked at was glioblastoma which is the most aggressive form of brain cancer. It has a peak incidence of 45 to 75 years. The treatment is surgery followed by radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And virtually every patient would relapse and half of them re would relapse within six months. And half of the patients would die within 14.6 months. The last time there was an improvement of survival was 15 years ago, by a merely two months. There is nothing in the horizi horizon for patients affected by glioblastoma. We took glioblastoma tissues from patients treated in the hospital and grew them in our laboratory. Within five days, you see a clump of cells. And within 20 days, these cells form into spherical structures we call them tumor spheres. These are telltale signs of cancer stem cells grown in the Petri dish. We went on to confirm that they are cancer stem cells by using a number of markers. For example, SOX2, OC4, 12140, and SSEA4. These are markers that are used to confirm the presence of cancer stem cells. They can be tagged with different fluorescent colors, green and red, and if you combine them, you can see orange. What you have seen here is that these stem, mar stem cell markers are present in cancer stem cells that were grown from glioblastoma. The blue colors are, uh, the blue color is the uh, nucleus of these cells. We can also use these markers to look for cancer stem cells in the glioblastoma tissue samples. The image on the left in green, OC4, which is a marker of cancer stem cells. And the, the image at the middle red is pro-renin receptor, which is one of the key components of the renin angiotensin system. If you combine the two images, you see orange in color. What this says is that cancer stem cells in glioblastoma exclusively express the renin angiotensin system. This will give us an opportunity to intervene 
with the cancer stem cells. The renin angiotensin system consists of a number of key steps. Each of these steps can be blocked by groups of existing medications. But the effect of these blockades can be reduced by the presence of, of enzymes such as catepsins B, D, and G. Fortunately, we do have medications that can block these enzymes as well. For example, curcumin, which is an active ingredient of turmeric, can be used to block catepsin B. We also know important pathways involved in cancer converge onto the renin angiotensin system. And these pathways can also be blocked by simple medications such as aspirin and metformin, which is used for treating, uh, treating diabetes. So we propose that one way to treat cancer is to go after the cancer stem cells, to vanquish the queen bee. And the way to do this is by controlling the renin angiotensin system using a combination of medications that are off patent and low cost and have been shown to be safe. And the cost of this treatment is $4,000 a patient a year. And this compares to $60,000 per patient per year currently for the treatment of glioblastoma. We receive um, approval from the Standing Committee of Therapeutic Trials and Ethics Committee to proceed with a clinical trial for four types of cancer. Unfortunately, we spent two years looking for funding to get started. We eventually began our study on glioblastoma at Hutt Hospital here in Wellington in New, in New Zealand. The reason for this is that there is no commercial incentive for drug repurposing. This is an article published in The Economist in 2019 highlighting the enormous potential for drug repurposing, but also underscore the challenges to get this, to support this line of research. And it highlights the need for government and philanthropy to support this line of work. So we proceeded with the glioblastoma phase one clinical trial the phase one clinical trial is to test the safety of the treatment. And I'm grateful for a number of supporters, Pacific Radiology for funding the PET scan, and Cyclotech Pharmaceuticals for funding the contrast media used for this scan. And for many donors who supported this effort, and I want to spe specially acknowledge Jet Crawford from Aerotown, Jet was nine years old when his father died of glioblastoma, age 49. In his grief, he decided to raise money to support research like this. He raised nearly $30,000, which was sufficient to fund the medications for one year for eight patients. Jet is my hero. So, we have now completed the phase one clinical trial for glioblastoma. To be eligible for entry into the trial, the patient would have to have exhausted conventional treatment for whom no further treatment options are left. We have shown that the treatment is safe and is well tolerated. It preserves the quality of life and performance status of the patient during treatment. And we have also shown that the median overall survival was 19.9 months, which compares favorably to the 14.6 months with conventional treatment. This is one of the patients enrolled in our study. The, the scan on the left was before treatment, the one on the right was three months after treatment. You can see the tumor had reduced by more than half in volume and along with the activity of the tumor. We have now designed a phase two clinical trial to confirm the findings of our phase one study. We are very excited by the prospect what this study might show because we have shown the expression of the renin angiotensin system by cancer stem cells in numerous types of cancers 
in fact, all 14 types that we have investigated. We have shown that the treatment is safe and well tolerated. It is affordable. It can be taken by mouth at home. It is convenient for the patient. And this would in go in many ways to address the equity or access problem. But we need to get this started. Just imagine we could come out with an, an e uh, effective, low-cost treatment for cancer that can be freely available to anyone living anywhere in the world. Thank you very much.